Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. Want to welcome back to the program Jason Miles from uh, This Is Revolution and uh, also uh, Sublation Magazine. Sublation. And don't forget Damage Magazine as well. I also write and it. Damage Magazine. Um, Jason, you should first off know that Kowalski from Nebraska is very proud of you, and oh, I'm you. unclear why. Um, <laughs> but he says it would be helpful and knowing coming from you, from him. Um, all right, let's talk about your piece here. Um, you quoted John Bon Jovi. I did. Hmm. Never thought I would do that in my life. There you go. Not a what, Bon Jovi fan at all. What prompted you to quote John Bon Jovi? Um, I try to write my pieces around music titles. And I was thinking about uh, the Talking Heads. Um, and... Mm. I wanted to call the piece same as it ever was, but I didn't want to necessarily start it with that quote. And I was making a a playlist of 80s glam metal for no good reason. And um, some Bon Jovi stuff kind of showed up there. And I was thinking about that song, One It Dead or Alive, with that line. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start the piece off with the most ridiculous thing ever. and And I did it. Uh, it's all the same only the names will change every day it seems we're wasting away mm -hmm. waste in away waste in yeah. um what 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 has not changed and what do we think it uh what, what do we think has changed um so I, i'll i'll try to be as brief as possible i live in mexico but my children live in the united states in the san francisco area where i'm from and I drive up as often as possible to see them and to see family. And there's a part of California that I get stuck in where my phone dies and I have to listen to conservative radio for a few hours. It's in the central part of the I-5 drive. And it happens every time. And I've been consuming an obscene amount of right-wing content and who are you listening to these days <laughs> what's in your what's in rotation <laughs> there's there's two shows so oh god so i'm so mad at all of you people on the screen so there's there's either it's either a religious a right-wing show uh-huh the national right-wing show and i forget that guy's name mark 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 Lucky. levin Mark Levin. No. Hey, dummy, get off this air. A, a beautiful sounding voice. I can see why you like to and subject then, yourself to it. Oh, my God. It is so bad. And then there's the, like local right wingers yeah. on this. So there's no, there's no uh, diversity of thought um, whatsoever. It's just. No. It's, um, it's uh, format purity is what it's called. Is that what it's called? Format purity? Well, format yep. purity lasts from about uh, Bakersfield. To the edge of Fresno County, when you're hitting almost the outskirts of the of the Bay Area, the kind of hinterlands, as we would call it, of the Bay Area, and then that's when, you know, my phone's finally charged, and <laughs> maybe I can get a friend on the phone or something. But um, there were just some portrayals that these guys had, definitely of crime and of immigration, that I felt were not honest. And they always really? lack uh, context. And th what's the same is that on a bipartisan level, Democrats and Republicans are not the biggest fans of open borders. And I live near the border and I get to see what it looks like. And it definitely doesn't look like the way it's described in right wing media. And I also felt like there, I, I don't know if the left has a proper response um, other than this kind of a generic liberal response to, to, uh, to immigration and crime as well. And I felt like these two things that were victories in 2020 for the Democratic Party were now being used as failures in 2024. If failures by okay, well, let's. I mean, how were they? In what way were they victories for the Democratic Party? Well, and then well, let's talk about like sure. uh, how they're being used as failures. You want to you want to go with like 
immigration, start off with that. Sure. If you think about Trump's uh, very, very strict remain policy, the first thing we started to see in like 20, was it 17, 2018, was those pens that were built and just shoving kids in there, right? We're going we're gonna to systematically separate children from whatever adult they're with. We're going to throw them in these pens. And, and you make the point in the piece that um, the Obama administration did this, but they only did it in instances where there was some uh, significant evidence that the adult the children had come in with was, let's say, was, was committing a crime beyond crossing the border without documentation was uh, bringing in uh, drugs or, uh, or, or wasn't or the parent or wasn't the parent, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, which happens what the, what, think, what yeah. the Trump administration did is they said, anybody who comes across with kids is necessarily violating the law. Therefore we separate them. And so the, the, it was on a whole different level, uh, yeah. uh process. It, and it, it was disgusting. But what you saw in that moment was a, a few things that happened. Number one, people saw children suffering or even heard children suffering, right? With when these news stories came out. And I remember I worked a music festival in El Paso, Texas. Neon Desert is what it's called. And I remember I came there right before that, or right around the time that stuff was happening. And there was like throngs of of volunteers, you know, giving blankets, trying to help with the kids. People really wanted to get involved because it was it's a horrible thing to see children suffering. I mean, you see when you you see these kids getting pulled from their parents, it's a horrible thing to see, right? Much like what you guys are talking about with Israel and, and Gaza, right? There's been a shift in the way people understand that, mainly because you see images of dead children, crying parents. No one wants to see that. I run into conservative people all the time that say things like, this is too much. So the messaging changed, the way people were interpreting it changed, and everybody wanted a better policy, and Trump was the bad guy. Trump has also made himself really easy to hate when it came to immigration. So even though the Trump uh, regime tried to paint this as these caravans of people, you know, at one point in time, you even had Geraldo Rivera talking about, hey, these caravans aren't caravans of terrorists. These are people that are making thousand mile journeys, you know, to get away from something. And you have to think about that for a second. What are you getting away from that you're going right. to you're walk in a jungle? You know, I get scared to walk. And if my water is out here, which happens often, I'm not walking on the other side of my house to flip on the well power because I don't know what crazy scorpion or snake is going to jump out. So you're talking about people that are, you know, crossing jungles and deserts you know, to leave bad situations, they're not just doing that because they're terrorists or they just want to, you know, take your your job, quote unquote. They're trying to, you know, flee bad situations. They are, you know, refugees in every sense of the word. And for a moment, there was a consensus that accepted that. You started to have these things called sanctuary cities, right? Where I'm from in the Bay Area definitely declared themselves a sanctuary city. Chicago did some some really great fights to make their city a true sanctuary city, which means you're not just saying it in in, in rhetorical name, but you're literally saying we're not going to turn over information to federal authorities. Yep. And there's only a few places that really did that. But that narrative has started to change. And there was a strategy that Trump tried to do, but even his people were like, mm, I don't know if it's legal. And that was, you know what, F these, these quote-unquote liberal cities, and let's drop off just busloads of, of migrants and see how they like it. That doesn't happen until, was it like 2020? And Abbott, we just did a show with the, the great Cedric Johnson uh, Tuesday, where we talked about what's going on in Chicago, where they've dropped off 80,000 people. These are human beings. Um, in Chicago, and it's caused a bit of an uproar with the black community because now the way it's being presented is a fight over resources. Yeah. So where immigration was a winning strategy because you could point at the bad guy that's doing the bad thing, even though bad guys are still doing bad things with human beings. 
is it is it the winning strategy this time around? I don't think so. Well, I mean, the there's a couple of things that strike me. One, there was a lot of data that showed that Trump was polarizing enough that people became far more. They saw immigration, race, um, other issues within this sort of like par like a uh, um, uh, sort of uh, paradigm that was either you know if it aligns with Trump then it's it's bad if it if it if it <laughs> is contrary to trump then it's then it's good and we saw people do that right i mean we saw that with you know the muslim ban we saw that with a bunch mm -hmm. of different things um and you're right in terms of the immigration thing and it seems like the democratic party has decided to wave the white flag and move closer to that sort of anti-immigrant um uh, position, right? I mean, that was what that that basically that uh, border pr proposal was by Biden. Um, and uh, the so what are the what do what, what are we talking about here? Is this a, uh, a a a problem with the parties or a problem with the American public? I mean, <laughs> I think the American public dissects information the way it's presented to them first and foremost. And I think we have to understand that. I think, you know, everybody likes to just yell out Chomsky manufacturing consent. It's like, I get what you're trying to say, but, you know, also understand how are you taking in the information that you're consuming and how is it being presented to you? And then how does that information try to ch change public opinion? So again, let's go back to the before 2020. Public opinion is kids in cages bad, but we're not really still talking about immigration, how we like it, because ultimately... Both parties don't really care. They love the fight, right? Both parties love telling you how many people they've deported. I don't remember if I quoted it in the piece because I had I did read quite a few articles on that because I wanted to kind of go back to that time and read what people were saying. But, you know, the Obama administration had no problem bragging about the amount of people that they were deporting. No, he would say he's. Uh, they would do this. The, the In fact, that was a an explicit strategy. They thought that if they could um, show record deportations, that they could get DACA and DAPA and and do a, a comprehensive uh, immigration bill. Um, and, I, I, you know, it's the same argument that supposedly, I don't know if Biden's making it with sincerity. Like, if I really cozy up to Netanyahu, he'll listen to me when I say, please don't kill as many uh, children. And that, of course, is absurd. I, I almost don't yeah. even think I think I think the uh, uh, the the Obama administration was sincere in their uh, thinking that that was going to work uh, because they were so um, captured by that sort of democratic mind virus. Uh, but at least they had DACA, right? Like at least the uh, Obama administration was just later, later, later in the administration when they realized like, oh, wait a second, we don't have anybody to negotiate. You know, when he was a lame duck, the, he started doing more administrative stuff and more executive actions. But my point is just that Biden is only proposing more militancy at the border compared to uh, to to maybe a, a, there was more of i think a sensitivity to wanting the latino vote from the from the democratic party by with obama than it, there is with biden that's just my read on it but the, you know daca is a complicated situation because i don't think people really understand that there's not a lot of pathways to citizenship within daca and there's tons of limitations and even if you look at what's going on in California, there was going to be a bill where undocumented um, adjuncts, was it students could get jobs and then that changed. So, well, let's be clear. Yeah. DACA is an executive action that is taken. The When I say DACA, mm -hmm. it, was, it was Obama that basically created DACA, which is we're just going to delay. We're going to delay deportation so long that folks, we have downgraded it, and you're safe. And then, uh, and then uh, Trump was going to reverse that. Biden has reinstated it, but the idea was that we were going to get a legislative version, yes. which would have provided anybody who came in those circumstances, not that we're taking discretion on um, applying the law, you know, the uh, deportation, uh, you know, uh, actions against you, but rather you're here and you're a citizen. It was a it was a way kinda. to 
right? It's, it's you're here. You can't vote. You don't have a lot of rights. You can't get a lot well, of no, services. Right now, DACA is that way. But the idea, the legislative fix was to basically say, we're going to make you citizens. And, uh, and you had to qualify for it. So it was only certain people that could qualify for it. It was a very democratic EMC program. I'm not heralding the program. I, it's completely. <laughs> com I mean, my point was just that the the the, the to your point, we backslid Jason, from that. We've backslid. Well, what, what I want to say though about the whole same as it ever was is what the Obamas of the world do is I'll signal to you that I'm on your side, but I'm winking to across the aisle that I'm still doing the job of deporting these people. And it's there's such a barrier for citizenship. Yeah. Now you have a captured labor force. Yes, that's exactly it, Jason. We've talked about. I had this is it's kind of uh, prescient that you're on today because yesterday on the show I had John Washington, who wrote the book "The Case for Open Borders" on the program, yeah. and it's it's a really good book. Um, and it's just like reimagining our conversations about the border um we we keep hearing about this crisis on the border crisis on the border but the way that our borders have been constructed over the past 50 60 years is a fairly new phenomenon right i mean and we're seeing this ac across europe as well with georgia maloney defunding the organizations that save migrants from drowning in the sea this is kind of the new frontier in my view of fascism of this border militants and uh as migration con continues to increase due to uh political realities and then also there will be some climate migration climate, as well yeah, this is only going to get worse and to your point biden and, and we've sam and i have talked about this at length biden has done absolutely nothing and he's actually done active harm to re to imagining a, a future and to reorienting the conversation because liberals are now talking about there's a crisis at the border we got to do something about it as opposed to it's like no our existing systems are in crisis because they're deeply deeply immoral and ineffective and and what happens though to the conversation when it's presented to the public at one point is there's a crisis at the border because they're locking up children in cages and they're separating from their parents. Oh my God, I can't wait to go help. And then it turns into, well, there's some pretty bad hombres crossing the border. And it's not just, you know, from the right wing radio, it's like, it's not just uh, Latinos. It's people from Afghanistan and the Chinese. And I'm like, I don't know where these people are coming from. It's so well, there, I mean, there is, in, in fact, there is a piece in the New York times right now. Um, uh, some reporters have gone down there to um, to talk to people who have gone to the Darien Gap, to um, right wing like um, you know people. I don't recognize their names, but they are right. Yeah, this is it. Uh, right wing uh, like um, you Laura know. Loomer. Oh, that's, that's Laura Loomer. Oh, that is Laura Loomer. They're going down and they're shooting a video down there to see. And there are, I mean. The, one of the ways that people uh, um, migrate without documentation into this country, um, if they are coming from, uh, you know, not from Central America or Latin America, is to fly there uh, to get a cheap flight and then to hope to, to cross that way. And we, you know, there are Chinese, there are Afghanistan, there are um, people from all around the world. The, the other half of undocumented in this country have just overstayed a visa, flown in with papers and stayed, uh, you know, longer than they should have.